Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Today we're getting back to work on this beautiful Ashburl Top guitar kit from Solo Music Gear. We're going to take the whole thing apart and today we are going to do the fret work, okay? So we're going to make sure that all of the frets are nice and level, properly crowned, the works. This is something you're going to have to do on probably most kits when you get them, so you might as well learn how. I'll show you what tools I use and everything. If you want one of these kits or pretty much any of the tools that I'm going to be using, we'll go through them as we go, but check out the link to solomusicgear.com in the description. It's my affiliate link, so if you get them through there, you help me out. I appreciate it. Let's get to work. All right, we are going to quickly go through the disassembly process here in case you didn't take the time to watch the assembly video in reverse. So I'm starting off taking off the strings. I've got a little attachment here, which is from my Baroque Guitar Care Kit. Fits right into my drill. Uh, that thing's in the Amazon link in the description if you need one. I don't think you need one, though. I mean, how hard is it to turn your tuners by hand? Not hard. So unless you're doing a ton of these, don't bother with that. Anyway, next I'm taking off the tuning pegs. That's a simple matter of loosening the bolt at the top, or the nut rather. I'm using a crescent wrench. You can of course use a socket set or one of those really expensive sockets from Stumac if you have no need of normal socket sets, um, but most people have a socket set. So just use that piece of cake and get those off of there real quick. And then I'm gonna take the string trees off using a number one Phillips. Make sure you're using a number one. Don't try to do this with the bigger screwdriver. It's probably going to strip them and then they're really difficult to get back in. So number one Phillips in the drill is how I end up doing it. Why is this taking so long? I really need to uh, yeah, speed this up. Here we go. In general, the disassembly process really doesn't take long. It's putting the guitar back together. That's a bit more of a pain usually. So I've already covered this, that figures. We take the strings out, or string trees out real quick, and then we go to take the nut out. Now, you don't have to take the nut out, but I do here because I want to replace it with a nicer one, a bone nut, uh, and also it makes it easier to level the frets. What I don't end up filming somehow because I shut the camera off when I'm struggling with it is me popping the nut out and losing a chunk of the top of the fretboard, which I then add to super glue back in. So... Be careful and uh, cut around the nut with a razor blade first if you can. Keep in mind, sometimes they're glued in. We just heat up our connections that we made in the last one and pull them off here. Very simple. Heat them up with a soldering iron and carefully pull the wire off. Don't splash yourself with hot solder. That will hurt. Heat up the back of the pot and pull off the ground. And then you just warm up those cables to pull them apart after if you've wired your two grounding cables together. And we do the same with the output jack, as you can see here, we just warm up those connections and pull them off. We can warm up the connections to put the um, wires back through them after, so no problem there. And if you find that you've got too much solder, well, use a solder sucker to remove it. That's what they're for, and they do make life a little bit easier. Taking the bridge out, very straightforward. We need to do this in order to be able to remove those electronics anyway, because if you remember, you have to ground your bridge. So we've got this grounding wire underneath here that runs under the bridge. And now I can pull all of those electronics out, pull the bridge out, and then unscrew your pick guard and just simply lift it off because that wire from the pickups just hanging there. Somehow I didn't film that either. I'm sorry. All right. So I make sure that my neck is nice and level. I've got my not straight edge from solo music gear that I'm using. Like I said, pretty much everything I'm using in this video is from them. So I make sure my neck's nice and flat. This is a useless step. I'm using a straight edge to just get a look at how the frets are sitting here. They all look pretty darn good, but you should always use a fret rocker to make sure that you check if anything's low. If you go through everything with a fret rocker and it all looks perfect, you don't need to level. But I'm demonstrating leveling, so obviously I'm going to do it anyway. There's really no reason for me to go through with a fret rocker. Now I'm carefully drawing a sharpie line on top of each of my frets very carefully. If you're not careful and you draw on your fretboard with a sharpie, you are probably going to be annoyed with yourself. Um, it's a bit of a difficult thing to deal with. So do this very carefully, or if you're going to tape off your fretboard, do it before you get to this stage, tape off your entire fretboard. I don't like to waste a bunch of tape, and so I try to avoid taping off my entire fretboard. When I do fretwork these days, 
For this video, I won't be taping off my fretboard at all because I'm not doing the final polishing process with polishing compound on the frets in this one. That will be saved for the finishing process. So here I am using my Solo Music Gear fret leveling beam. It's a nice, long, heavy one. So I let the weight of the beam do the work and I'm just gently going back and forth. I don't have to go very far because it's so long. That's what you want for a fretboard. The longer, the better. And I'm just going until I get a thin line at the top of each of those Sharpie marks that has the Sharpie removed. That's how I know everything's level. If there's still Sharpie there, it means that you've got a low spot. So you have to keep going until you've got a level. Just make sure you respect the radius of the fretboard when you're doing this. And you don't over sand in the middle or flatten it out or anything crazy like that. You have to go over the entire fret surface evenly. That's part of why it is so helpful to have a larger beam like that. Now I'm coming back in with my Sharpie and remarking the top of the frets. And I'm doing that because I'm going to want to crown them now. We want a very small intonation point at the top of the fret. The smaller the better. That makes it more precise and makes it easier for you to play in tune. So we need this mark across the top so that we know how far to go. And we just want to file down until we have a thin Sharpie mark left at the top. And we don't want to remove all of the Sharpie. Otherwise, we've lowered our fret. So I'm going over this with my Hosco fret crowning file. Also from Solo Music Gear. Really nice piece of equipment. A little bit on the pricier side. So if you can't afford one or don't want to spend the money for one, then I've done a video on how to make your own version. It's made with a piece of wood and it works wonderfully. It's just considerably slower when you use it and maybe slightly more complicated, but not all that difficult to get the hang of. It's pretty straightforward. Anyway, so we go over the frets a few times with this. Try to keep the amount of this that you're doing fairly even, but really your diagnostic tool here is that Sharpie line. You want to end up with a nice thin one at the end. So I will show you in a few seconds here what this ends up looking like. Again, you need to make sure you respect the radius and you can kind of use that Sharpie line as a guide for that as well and try to thin it out kind of evenly along the width of the fret. So if you look here, I've got what's left, which is a very thin Sharpie line. That's my perfect little intonation point at the top of the frets where the string is actually going to make contact when I play this guitar. So it's going to work beautifully and uh, I'm really happy with this. This may actually be the best fret crowning job I've ever done. Look at how nice and even and thin that is. Like really, what more could you ask for on that portion? Oddly enough, I posted a picture of this on Instagram that I thought was going to be super boring for everyone and people loved it. So if you want silly stuff like this, uh, check out my Instagram profile. Link is in the description. Here we go with the fret end rounding. So I've got a set of these fret end rounding files from Solo. They're made by Hosco and they are awesome. The back is this nice smooth curved piece so that you can't damage your fretboard unless you're being a nut job. Um, the sides are files for rounding and then the other end is that concave curve for doing, well, the rounding part on the top or you can come at it kind of from different angles using that. These are just a fantastic tool. They do a great job of this. They're very easy to control. These are why I don't have to tape off my fretboard. This is the part of this job that would generally result in the most gouging and stuff. And because these are so well designed, I really don't have to worry about it. They're also pretty quick. So depending on how uh, compulsive you are about your fret end rounding, you can get through the job pretty rapidly with this. Because honestly, after this, you have to come in with your sandpaper anyway if you want to do a perfect job, in my opinion. And that really does kind of take off any last little bits that you don't have rounded before this. So I'm going to say that you can get through this job. Well, you're watching me do it right now in real time. This is how fast I go through and do kind of each side. I go, I've gone through one side there and then I'll come back and, uh, and do the other side. This is, of course, sped up to 300%, I believe. And then I just come over the top with the concave portion and make sure I round off the tops of all of them. And that's that's it. Flip the neck around, do the other end of the fret. Problem solved. It always ends up very comfortable, and I'm generally pretty happy with how it turns out just with this amount of time put in. Now, you can put 
an incredible amount of time into getting a perfect rounded fret edge if you want. Um, but there are some shortcuts. After doing this, you'll see me come in with my sandpaper. That's going to help. And then I go right over the edge with my fret erasers after, and that also helps. This is a piece of 1200 grit, and I'm using my finger so that it kind of runs between the frets. I know you can't really tell, but my finger is kind of protruding downward so that it runs between the frets and sands all the corners and edges of them. Uh, and also rounds over the side of the fretboard a little bit, which is another important step to getting a nice, comfortable, kind of vintage feeling neck that, you know, plays as though it's been worn down a little bit on the edges, as though it's been played for years. That's the kind of stuff that's really sought after in a guitar neck, and that's one of the tips for helping you get it. You can also actually burnish the edges of your fretboard if you forget to do this step, but my advice to you is to just remember to do it. I've got a really nice finish on the tops of these frets already from the steps that have been taken. So I'm starting with the second finest of my fret erasers because I don't need to go with the coarse stuff. I don't need to start with the 180 and really grind anything down. My fret leveling, sorry, my fret crowning file uh, is really nice and it did a great job. But if you've got a little bit of a rougher crowning job, if you've gotten at it with one of those three corner files, for example, to do your crowning work, then you may find that you need to start with the 180 grit uh, fret eraser. These are the Hosco fret erasers from Solo Music Gear. You may have to start with the coarser ones and work your way up from there. I'm starting with the red one, and then I'm going to come in with the yellow, which is a thousand grit, and then that's basically going to give me my polish. It's going to polish the tops of the frets. It's going to round over any lasting imperfections from the process before the fret crowning process. It's going to remove all of that sharpie, and it's going to give me a nice shine. Sorry, the the Sharpie and the Imperfections came out with the last eraser, but this one really just kind of finishes off the job. And then you can come in after this and do your final polishing work, either by hand or with the Dremel tool using some metal polish, and really get these things up to a beautiful mirror shine for the absolute best playability, the most shiny appearance, and probably the smoothest bends, if my understanding of physics makes sense. Although, bending probably doesn't require that. But anyway, a shiny fret is a proper fret and that's what you're looking for in the end. You'll find that this thousand grit fret eraser does a pretty damn good job, but there's always that little bit extra that you can get from the polishing process and I recommend that you go through that um, either at this point or if you're doing it the way I am in this one, you'll go through it at a later stage when you're already doing a bunch of tape work anyway. All right, guys, that is it. That is our fret work, and that is looking awesome. The only thing left to do to these is polish them, and frankly, that, that thousand grit fret eraser is probably good enough. These are looking great. They're nice and shiny. Yeah, they don't even need to be polished, but you can polish them, and I likely will, just to give it that extra little bit of slip and make it feel like I've done you know, the perfect job. Uh, but I'm gonna save that until I go to do the finishing work on the guitar. So that's gonna be among the last steps that I do. This thing is looking good so far. I am very happy with it. We're coming up on the finishing process, but before we do that, I'm going to put a belly carve in here because right now the back is perfectly flat. So we're gonna do a belly carve, and we're gonna do it by hand using a Shinto rasp in our next video. So stick around, stay tuned as always. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate it. Remember to subscribe so you can see the rest of this project. And I will see you in the next one. Have a good one.